All right, hello everybody. My name is Siglas Hushmit and welcome to this new weekly live show, Premium Coaching. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to take a look at some of the games that have been sent to me. It's been plenty. So I have to make a disclaimer right from the start that I won't be able to look at all of them, obviously. And also only have not that much time to take a look at every single game because at the same time, I want to get as many as I can. Before I get started, of course, we have to make sure that you can hear me and hopefully you can see me. So just let me know in the chat real quick. But um, I can hear and see me, so I think we're ready to go. All right. Yeah, thanks Ilya for the for the picture. Much appreciated. So I wanted to start with word 20, but <laughs> I messed up a little bit. I deleted the analysis um, accidentally. So word 20, if you're there, please send me another invitation. But first I'm going to take a look at another game right now. So this is certainly something we can use as feedback, put an undo button into this feature for people like me who just press around and then mess it up. So let's go to somebody else. <clears throat> and I really appreciate that I got so many games sent in. That's awesome. And I'm really hoping to get as many, to get to as many as I can. All right, so here we have the first one from Nobix. And Nobix sent in a game, which is a classical game. And, and honestly, I, I do prefer that because you can take so much more away from a classical game compared to a blitz game or a bullet game. I told you you can send in any game you want, but if we're talking about from what you can take away the most, then certainly classical games are the way to go. All right, and also what I would like to point out for Nobix right now, if you're listening, you can actually go back into the broadcast and, and chat, with, chat with me live here if you have any anything to add. There's like a, a chat on the in this feature. So this is also possible. So let's get started. The only thing I have to criticize here right now, I'm not quite sure yet which side Nobix is playing on, but as we're going along, hopefully we'll figure it out. So d4, e6, c4, f5, Knight f3, we're going through the opening here. This looks like a Dutch to me. Knight c3 and now looks like a stone wall. And Novix is saying, my opponent hoped that I wasn't going to play this move. So I'm assuming Novix is playing with the white pieces. And this is indeed the best way I think to play against the stone wall to put the bishop on f4, taking control of this important square on e5. And you will notice during the show, I will make use of these features here. With those symbols, I can put in pretty colors on the board. For example, mark this square on e5. So c6, there's one question by isolated pawn, the opponent is rated zero. Well, probably Black just forgot to put in the name. Now Macaulay is coming in and he's celebrating. Happy 4th of July to everybody in the United States from Chess24. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Happy 4th of July. Sorry for hijacking your show. No, I feel so much better. All right. 
That's Kentucky bourbon there. <laughs> Tastes pretty sweet. Thank you. I was afraid that I messed up somewhere, but indeed it was just Macaulay. Um, wishing all the Americans happy 4th of July. Okay, let's get back to where I stopped talking about the stonewall structure. All right, e3, let's continue with the game. a5, and here, Novix is saying, here I spend a lot of time to think about uh, whether I should answer a5 with a4. And that's, that's a good question, a good comment you're putting in here. And I like that you didn't answer a5 with a4. Play bishop e2 instead. If I place a4, I have to go, go out of this um, marking feature. Then you clearly weaken the square on b4, right? So black can play knight a6, knight b4, put another piece on b4. And at the same time, black doesn't have this weakness. Black doesn't have a weakness on a4. Also, um, it's not quite clear what black wants to do with a5 anyway. So you can just ignore it. Um, a5 really doesn't do much in this position. So good choice to keep going with bishop e2. Knight bd7 castle. We're going along knight g5. This is an atypical move, clearly. But it could work. It depends on what's going to happen here. Usually in this kind of positions, White plays a piece to e5 at some point. And I could imagine knight e5 being a completely reasonable move right here. Not a typical move include queen c2. And then oftentimes this is idea really to take on d5. Let's say black plays castle here. Now you could think about c takes c5. This is always a decision one has to make carefully. And the point is we want black to take back with the c pawn. Then we can play knight b5, and this is great news, right? Um, then always the question is if e takes d5, is queen takes f5 possible? There you have to calculate some stuff like knight e4 and so on. So you have to you have to calculate the stuff. But it looks like here this is quite possible for white because of the knight b4 is queen e6 check. All right, so let's go back and look at knight g5. So asking direct questions to the pawn on e6, knight f8. And here you're writing, in this phase of the game, I had the impression that I was that I, that I had an advantage, that I had an advantage because black removed the knight back to the eighth rank. It could be that you have an advantage, but well, the knight is not going to stay on f8 that long. And then at the same time, the question is, what is this knight doing on g5? So unless you have some direct follow up, maybe this was not the way to go. If you play bishop e5, and now your opponent played knight g6. If your opponent plays h6, it looks like there's nothing better you can do than to retreat with the knight to h3 or f3, which would be also fine, I guess. Um, and then knight bd7, black would castle, and then the question is how much did this help you not to play knight g5? But instead your opponent played knight g6 and here you're writing knight f3 was not the best move maybe. Instead bishop h5 playing more aggressively. Bishop h5 preventing h6. But also again we need to ask ourselves we need to ask ourselves what is really happening here. You have a lot of pieces close to a black king, but are they doing anything? That's the question, right? Also, I think we need to ask ourselves, 
What is white going to do if the knight takes h5? Indeed. This looks like black's just winning a piece. Queen takes h5, bishop takes g5, bishop takes g7, and now... Yeah, I don't think this is particularly good for for black. It's not quite sure what, we, what would be a best continuation here, but my feeling is telling me this is not great. This should be pretty good for black winning a piece here because of their... Oh, hold on. Queen h5 is still possible. Never mind. King d7, queen takes g5. But my feeling is telling me that black is doing fine here. So bishop h5 instead wasn't a better option. So let's continue with the game for now. Because like I said in the beginning, obviously I cannot spend too much time on each individual game because I got a lot of games to cover and obviously I cannot cover them all so I'm already apologizing for that. But so we have to keep going. But my feelings tell me here that this knight g5 maneuver wasn't necessary. It looks a little bit unnatural for me, to me. So knight f3 back, takes, takes, castle c5. Yeah, I don't like c5, honestly. Um, you're writing, you like to block the, the bishop on e7 here with this move. But the bishop doesn't mind that much, honestly. And um, the whole, oftentimes the whole idea for black to, to play is on the king side. And I think it helps black if the position is of close nature. So I'm not happy with this move, really. I think one way to go would be just to go queen c2 again here. And one could think about preparing f3 and e4, something of this nature. All right, let's keep going. c5, bishop d7. And now playing on the queen side, b4, takes, takes. Knight e4, you're asking what to think of knight e4. That's a very typical move for black to play in this kind of position. Here you played knight a4, which I like. You're keeping the knights on the board. The knight is aiming to go to b6. And hold on. And you have the option to push this knight away from e4 again. Rook a7, f3, knight g5, knight b6. Looks all good to me. Rook b1, occupying the open b file, queen c7 f4. f4 I would be careful about. Why are you giving up the e4 square? This is this doesn't seem to be necessary for me, uh, to me. Right now the knight is weirdly placed on g5, right? Um, it's not really participating in the game, it's not having any impact and by playing f4 you're bringing the knight back into the game, allowing the knight to come back to e4. So Instead, you could just continue playing on the queen side. This is where you're strong right now. And also, you can always keep this option h4 in mind. But here, maybe simply a move like queen d2 or queen b3, something of this nature. Um, connecting the rooks, maybe doubling the rooks in the future because really, what is black going to do? Black doesn't have a lot of counterplay either. Um, of course there's not a direct breakthrough I'm seeing for white here but definitely you're having the upper hand here and you're in control so by playing f4 you're just helping out the black knight. Now you're saying I was worried that the knight is going to be too strong on e4 so your plan was to attack it and you're spending the time now to exchange it by bringing this knight on b6 back. Okay. I, I see what you're doing here. Not quite sure what I think of it yet because, well, you just spent two moves, knight a4, knight b6, and now you're 
retreating. But at the same time, I think it's it's a good choice because then again, the knight wasn't doing that much on b6. Looked pretty, but wasn't doing that much. g5. Here you're saying you spend a lot of time to evaluate the chance of black for an attack on the king side. Okay, yeah, this is indeed, this should be a concern, right? g5, typical uh, move, and then sometimes black might even be able to bring the rook over. And now you played rook b3. I like this move. I think I do. Multi-purpose move, right? For one, you're preparing possibly to double on the B file. And on the other hand, if black takes, you can defend on the third rank. This looks like a quite a decent move to me. G4, of course, this is helping you because now you don't have to worry about that black is going to open up the G file. Nice to see. G3. G3 isn't necessary, I think. Um, there's this common rule of thumb. Don't move pawns on the side of the board where you're weaker. So, or where you have less space. In this case, you have less space on the king side. And black is attacking there, so you don't want to move any pawns because this is just going to help your opponent to accelerate his attack. Right? By playing G3, now suddenly black only new, needs two moves to open up something here, to open up the H file. Before that, black needs, well, black isn't even able to move, to open up any file. Whenever black plays H5, H4, H3, you can just move past it, or G3, H3. So I think that would have been a better way to play here, especially because you're in control of the only open file on the board, which is the B file. All right, let's keep going. G3, H5, Knight C3. And you're saying this tactic, you and your opponent missed, and I'm assuming you're talking about the tactic A4 here, <coughs> which would win in exchange. Because if the rook moves, this knight on c3 is going to drop, and after knight takes e4, this a takes b3, and unfortunately, you don't have any follow up. So you are in trouble here. Probably knight d2, rook takes a3, you knight b takes b3 would be your best course of action, but clearly, you are worse here. So, how to spot this tactic? Well, it was a little bit hidden because beforehand the pawn couldn't move on a4, but whenever you're in a situation where one piece is protecting another, there's this dependency, you just have to watch out for moves that can attack something. In this case, it's a4. All right, but your opponent missed it. Takes, takes, h4. King f2, you're saying you spend a lot of time on this move. Okay. I like this move. I think I do. You're preparing to move the king away from where the action is going to be. Another choice, natural choice, would have been king g2, but I think I like king f2 too. Bishop f6 and knight d3, queen h7, rook h1. That's good. Defending against the threat of taking g3, rook c1. Rook h7, and now black obviously is increasing the pressure here. Uh, not easy to get out for you, I can see that. King g2, okay. This is interesting. Another option would be maybe to go something like queen g1. But it's not easy here, because already I feel like black is able to, to swing Another rook to the open file. Tricky, tricky. Maybe it, this is still fine. Yeah, this should be still fine. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful here, definitely. King g2, king f7, and now queen a4. And you're asking, what do you think of this queen move? 
is the queen weak on the edge of the board? The plan was to 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 tempt the bishop away from f6, so you could play knight e5. I'm not quite sure. Oh, so you want to provoke bishop d8, and this is actually what happened. Yeah, interesting. And why not? I don't see anything wrong with it, honestly. You have everything defended on the king side right now. H takes g3, just take back. So this looks absolutely fine for me. This looks like a good move, especially since the black pieces look a little bit strange right now. Uh, all, yeah, not, not well coordinated, certainly. So good move, I think. Bishop d8, knight e5 check. And here you're saying you spend again a lot of time to play your next move. And yeah, it's not easy. Um, maybe you could take here on c6. This would be a move certainly to consider. Um, of course, first it looks strange to go into this pin, but you're, you're soon ready to to unpin the knight, let's say rook c7, bishop b5, then move the knight away, and then you, you have a very strong pass pawn on the c file. And I don't see anything wrong with it right now. Um, rook b7 maybe, but even here bishop b5, and once again, this one on d8 is also hanging, I'm just noticing, and once again, um, the black piece are not working well together. Also, very interesting suggestion here by suggestion here by St. Bats. Um, bishop takes g4 is what was played and looks also good. But if I'm thinking about it, uh, I like knight takes c6 more because again you're getting a very strong pass pawn here on c5 if this works and. I don't see why it wouldn't work. So knight takes c6 would have been my preferred option here to follow with bishop b5. All right, bishop takes g4, nice little tactic. At the same time though, of course you're winning a pawn, but it's, gets, it's getting a little bit risky because you're opening up a file against your king. Before that, everything was closed. Everything was so safe for your king. So you have to be careful here because you're opening up the g file and rook g8 and suddenly you can already feel black is putting up the pressure now. So I think this might have been a critical moment instead to take on, on c6 here instead of bishop takes g4. Okay, rook g8, g4, takes, knight takes g4. Well, this is honestly still looking pretty good. Here though, you could just cement everything by playing h3. Just cement the knight on g4, right? Now, nothing is going to happen here. Well, black would need to sacrifice something um, to create anything. So I think this was a great option to play h3, to just protect the knight completely. You play king f2, makes sense to go out of the pin and might be also fine, honestly. But I liked, I liked the idea of h3 to just to have it completely safe. Now rook b1. Honestly, this also looks completely fine here. King f8, rook g1, queen c7. Well, it looks like you're just up a pawn. The king is safe in the center for now. Knight e5 and rook h g7. Now he's saying the explanation of the tactical possibilities in this position would be interesting. Hmm. I'm not seeing too many tactical possibilities here. The question is how should you continue? And indeed, that's not that easy. At the same time, I'm, I feel like everything's all right. Of course, there's bishop h4 right now, the threat. But, so you need to do something here. So I would say exchange a pair of rooks. It's not what you did. Well, bishop g4 is also interesting. But maybe just exchange a pair of rooks. Yeah. And then maybe here, something like bishop g4 would be possible. 
Of course, the king is a little bit unsafe on f2, but it looks like this is all holding up and white should be still clearly better here. Okay, let's see what you did here. Bishop g4, bishop h5, it's getting tactical. All right, so here are the difficulties, yeah? Now there's a tactic. This problem of bishop h4 that I just want to avoid by exchanging one pair of rook, rooks. You're saying the computer is saying rook g3 is the... Oh, after bishop takes h5, bishop h4, rook g3 is the best move. What is the best move in this position, though? That's what I'm wondering. But maybe there is nothing better than bishop takes h5, queen d1. There would be bishop h4 still, looks quite unpleasant. Looks unpleasant, but how unpleasant is it really? Hmm. It looks pretty unpleasant to me. Yeah, this check is not easy to deal with. So after he takes bishop check, and now you move the king. Instead rook g3, you're asking, is this a move you have to see? What was the difficulty to see this move? <clears throat> well, of course, you always need to consider all moves in a position. Um, but I'm not even sure how much this move would maybe save you. But maybe it would. This it's, it's becoming very, very concrete here, very tech. Well, the point of this move is that you're getting an ad additional piece. If after king f3, you're just losing the whole rook on g1, but now you're getting an additional piece. But of course, you also have to deal with threats such as rook g2. So one interesting line would be here to go rook b8 to exchange one pair of rooks, but I think that here, whew, this is very tactical, everything, but it looks like white is lost because rook g2, this is mate. And uh, after king f1 or king e1, there's h2 and nothing stopping h1 queen. And now the, your queen is just too far away. And uh, h1 queen is coming. So... This doesn't seem to work, so instead probably you would need to play a move such as bishop f3 to stop rook g2. And this is very concrete here, but it looks like this is holding for, for white. And maybe even white is better, honestly, because these ideas, rook b8 and, and so on, are still in a position, also queen takes c6. And it looks like black cannot do anything right now. Um, so yeah, this was would be the way to go. And again, how could you see this move? Well, simple point is to win the bishop in h4. That's all. Okay. Let's see how this continues. Takes, takes, takes. Check. Takes, takes. Queen g7. I mean, this also looks fine to me, honestly. Well, maybe still tricky, yeah? But very interesting, definitely. Queen c2, king e7, <clears throat> queen b1, king f6, f5, queen h6, queen b7. And you're saying at this point you still hope to win this game. And yeah, why not? This looks great. Um, but you only had three minutes left in your opponent 45. Yeah, this looks like winning for for uh, for white. Um, so looks pretty good here. Like the last moves, we went through them quickly, but um, looks like. Okay, here maybe black doesn't have to take, but we're not concerned with the black moves because this analysis is for you, for the white player. And yeah, queen c2, 
Queen b1. I like all of this, really. Yeah. Well done. And here, queen takes c6. Yes. Queen e7. Queen d6. Takes, takes. takes e5, f5, and bishop e8, and you're writing, you, the, the game continued for a few moves, but then you lost because you played an illegal move in um, great time trouble. This position, I don't know what to think of this position, honestly. King e6, d7, I don't know what to think of this. I guess a draw maybe but um instead of queen d6 here you don't have to play queen d6 uh there must there must be some other options here which are better um let's see maybe a move like king g4 no, king g4, there's king g7. We don't want to allow that. And then there's queen g5, and we have to watch out. Maybe e4? Hmm. Maybe e4. Uh, looks interesting to me right now. Um takes king takes and if now king g7 and queen takes e6 takes takes and my intuition is telling me that this is winning for white c6 bishop d8 e7 takes c7 yeah wow what a game um i think well, i hope the other viewers also enjoyed this game very interesting and Thanks for sending this in. Um, I think for the most part, this was quite a decent game. Uh, there was this one tactical oversight uh, with a4, but apart from that, it looked like you were doing pretty well most of the game. And of course, I might have overlooked things here and there because I'm not looking with an engine right now. I thought about it before going into the show, but I would like to try out Checking without the engine because there's more of a human aspect and um, we're not looking at the evaluations all the time and um, focusing on other things. So let's go to the next game. And I'll switch real quick to choose one. But yeah, this was a long game and <laughs> we're already 30 minutes into the session and now I'm going to pick a game by Gular Gula Dash. And Ilya is making a a decent point bishop g3 instead of um, bishop d8 in the line we just saw. Yeah. Good point. Well, no time to go back. We have the next game open by Gula Dash, uh, playing with the black pieces here. So let's get started. No comments this time, so I'm expecting this to go by a little bit quicker. So let's see what we have here. This was probably a game played in the play zone. We have the Marochi structure. And let me let me move around the board. Oh no, this is not what I want to do. Hold on. This was the board size, guys. In case you ever want to enlarge your board, you can do this here. But we want to flip it. All right, bishop g7. So this is a typical Marochi here in the accelerate dragon variation. Now a6. I know the main move is bishop d7. Um, okay, a6. It's also quite possible, I assume. Queen e2, bishop d7, f3, queen c7. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the theory here. Um, Queen c7 looks a little bit odd to me, but then again, might be theory. I don't know. 
rook f d1, rook f d8, rooks in the center. Yeah, and this is why I was saying queen c7 looks odd because now white definitely has this chance of playing knight d5 and black cannot take because of this pin on the c file. Um, white didn't do this, however, this was my concern with queen, a, uh, queen c7. So it feels like this whole setup is a little bit shaky. Um, maybe instead of playing rook c8 here, maybe knight takes d4 instead, and then rook a c8 would be a better way to play. Because now after knight d5, black could just take on d5. All right, b3. Queen a5. Yeah, this is kind of the natural square for the queen in the, these kind of structures. Either on a5 or maybe on b8. But c7 is always a little bit tricky because you're always running into these knight d5 ideas. King h1, bishop e8. I mean, one very typical idea is to play with b5 at some point. And maybe this was possible here to take on d4 first, bishop takes and now play b5. Um, unless there's something directly wrong with it, like some kind of tactic, then you should go for this. And I don't see anything being wrong with it right now. Um, no. This looks fine to me. Takes b5, a takes b5. Obviously knight takes b5 doesn't work because the queen takes d2, the rook on c1 is hanging. Um, same is true for any other knight move, really. So this would have been a good, good chance to play with b5. All right, bishop e8 instead. So, but this is what you want to look for, right? This is why you play a6 to prepare b5 at some point. So this standard exchange, knight takes d4 followed by b5 is certainly something to look out for in this structure. Knight d5 takes, takes. Okay, we have some exchanges now here. Okay, I guess it doesn't really make a difference. Takes, 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 and takes, takes. Oh, tactic, tactic. Bishop h6, my friend. This was winning an exchange here. Always watch out for those little skewers, I think they're called, these little tactics. Uh, when I guess two pieces are on the same diagonal. Okay, b5 is also a good move, definitely, but if you can win an exchange, then do that. Takes, takes, and here black's having a quite a comfortable endgame, of course. Rook e1, I don't like e6. Um, I don't like it. It feels like you're just giving giving white a target on d6 and opening up the position and really it isn't improving your pawn structure. Um, well, one move that I would probably play immediately is just king f6. The king is so well placed on f6, defending a pawn on e7 closer to the center. And then you can think about how, what you're going to do next. Um, maybe something like, hmm. Maybe something like b4, or even taking on c4. Let's say white plays a move like king g1. Could either take on c4, bishop takes c4 and a5. This looks pretty decent to me. Or you could think about playing something like b4, and then maybe a5, a4, but in the meantime, white is also going to do some stuff here with rook a1, a3. So I'm not too sure about that. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. But even this might be fine. But maybe just taking on c4. And um, But there's not even a rush. You could also first play a move like rook c7, maybe rook to b8, rook to c8, and then go from there. All right, let's look at e6. Takes, takes, <clears throat> takes, takes, bishop d3, e5, yeah, I'm not sure how much I like e5. Once again, I would rather bring the king to f6 right now and be flexible. I know the rule of thumb is to place the pawns on the opposite color of the bishop, but here, it's allowing white to, to put in this, this blockade on the light squares here for now. Not sure how much I like it. Bishop c6 and by exchanging bishops I feel like you give away a lot of the advantage you have. You, I guess, let's put it differently, you don't have a big advantage but you have something here. And I feel like by, giving, by exchanging bishops you're giving it away. Um, Let's see. Maybe just playing b4 for now. Just fixing the pawns here on the on the queen side, and then improve the king, and then you can go from there. You control the only uh, the only file, the open, only open file. Rook d1. You can just play king f8 or king f7 and go to e7 because white cannot take right now because of back rank checkmate and this looks quite comfortable so bishop c6 now exchanging exchanging bishops and also improving the white pawn structure now this pawn is a target obviously and is weak and you're not having any advantage anymore let's see if there was anything you could do could have played king f7 here once again, making use of the fact that white cannot take on d6 because in the end there is the back rank checkmate. So don't concede to anything. Don't give in. You don't have to improve white's pawn structure. If there's any other option, then go for it. King f7, I think, was the way to go here. But even then, maybe a tiny bit better for black still, but not much. All right, takes eight, rook c6, kings come to the center, that makes sense. Check, king f2, rook c7, rook d5. Yeah, I'm not sure why you return with the rook to c7 here. Just a move like b4 would make more sense. Once again, fixing the pawns here and having a target on a2. Rook c7, rook d5, check. Changing one pair of rooks. Wow, and this is very risky what you're doing here. And I'm not sure if it's good. I would say it's not good. You're going for d5. And uh, this is something you need to be very careful of because here you're offering to go into a pawn game. And if this pawn game is lost, there's no way, that, way out for you. Um, before going into pawn games, you really always have to double check and make sure this pawn game is not in your disadvantage. So I don't think d5, d5 might as well just lose here after e takes d5, rook takes d5 if white takes now. And now white needs to take care of b4. And um, white has two options, either a3 or a4. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if a4 just wins the game. Takes, takes. Now it's very simple. Black needs to go and pick up this pawn and, well, white is just yeah, way too fast, right? This is very obvious. Yeah? <clears throat> and game over. So if white was to take on d5, you just lose. So you have to be very careful before you play moves such as d5. Instead, once again, b4 would have been my choice, most likely, or rook c8. Either one, b4 or rook, c, uh, or rook c8, and well, it's probably gonna end in a draw. But d5, now you should have lost.
But instead, white declined the rook and game played rook c2. Let's see how this continued. Rook d4, a3, g5, Yeah, now, indeed, white is taking the chance and is going into opponent game because you didn't stop it. You need to play something else here. Um, something else, for example, probably king e6 should be okay. But now white is going into opponent game and this is lost. Because once again, white has the distant past pawn and is going to push it and you have to collect it and then white just collects your pawns as it happened in the game. Obviously, I don't have to tell you all, that, all of that and here you resign. So really, the reason why you lost this was because you maybe, I don't know, due to time travel, I don't know, but you misevaluated the, the opponent game and you allowed this opponent came two times and the second time your opponent went into it and won. So this is your takeaway from this. Always make sure to double check the opponent games or before allowing any opponent games, just make sure it's it's in your favor or it's what you want it to be, right? And then of course, the one critical moment where you could have just uh, get pretty much a winning advantage was here, just playing bishop h6 wins the exchange. All right, let's go to another game. And we have the game by S. Patry. And before I begin with this one, I'm going to drink something. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. As you can tell, I don't have much time to look at the chat, but sometimes I glance over, so you can keep posting there, but I'm already busy enough going through the game, obviously, so I don't have much time to discuss anything going on in the chat. <clears throat> All right, they're lacking. D5, takes, takes. Bum, bum, bum. S. Patry is playing with the black pieces here, by the way. E5, bishop e2. And now, yeah, you're writing yourself, queen takes g2, would have won a pawn. And um, indeed, why not, right? Why not take this pawn? Just have to make sure you're not dropping your queen, but it's not the case here, and white is not obtaining enough compensation here, clearly. So you could have picked this up c5 i like c5 though grabbing some more space in the center i mean queen takes g2 would have been better but c5 is also nice um yeah i like it very comfortable position for black already nice grab of the center it's kind of similar to what we saw in the last game this marochi bind c4 is a move black likes to see weakens the d4 square and also, this pawn on d3 becomes a target, so I'm sure you were happy to see this. I'm not sure if the queen needs to retreat all the way to d8. I think d6 would have been also completely fine. And then keep developing your pieces. And if knight d2, if Knight e4, if you're worried about that, no, probably f5 is just completely fine, threatening also. In some case, maybe f4 and black's doing well. Castle, h6, you're writing yourself bishop f5 right away or even queen c7 would be better. Yeah, the common rule of thumb for all of you out there is develop your pieces first. Don't play pawn moves or queen moves first unless there's some necessity. Right here, black's playing h6 and there was no necessity. h6 is always a move 
you can play later as well. So as Padre is pointing out completely correctly, correctly here, bishop f5 first would have been better. Just develop this piece, put on some pressure on the pawn on d3, follow up with moves like queen d7, rook d8. This is easy to play, guys. And if at some point you need to play h6 because you need space for your king, you need space for your bishop and f5, then you can do it. But right now, there was no need for it. All right, let's keep going. A5. I don't think A5 is necessary here. Um, you can just ignore that for now. It's B4 doesn't seem to be a threat. You can just play Bishop F5 and if B4 you just take it. Excuse me, just take it. A takes B4, Bishop takes B4. What's going on? You just have a one pawn. So, of course, it's important to look what your opponent is doing. But at the same time, you also need to ask yourself, is he really threatening anything? And as of yet, b4 is not a threat. So you can just ignore it. Queen c2, bishop f5, rook a d1, queen c7. I would rather have to queen on the d file. Why not? Uh, why not put on keep the pressure on the pawn on, on d3? Just play the queen to d7 instead. I mean, c7 is also fine, but somehow it just seems more natural for me to have the queen on d7 here. It's just my intuition at the same time. Probably doesn't make a big difference. Knight e1, rook d8, bishop f3. Rook e8, all natural moves. I like it. Bishop takes c6 is also a move you like to see. Well, it just gives up the bishop. Um, very happy for for white, uh, for black. Excuse me. Here you're writing. Bishop takes h3. Would have won a nice pawn. That's true. Basic tactic. If there's a piece on f3 unprotected and then a pawn on h3, we see it so often. Um, just take it. Just have to make sure there's nothing else going on. Of course, here knight takes e5 would fail due to checkmate so those little tactics you know they also come with experience after seeing a lot of games and playing a lot of positions then you just spot them instantly or you just solve a lot of tactics to train your tactical vision but um, it doesn't take long to to really get good at spotting those tactics bishop f6 instead Okay, sure, rook f e1. And now I would be tempted to go e4 here. I'm not sure how good it is, but this is the first move I'm looking at. Also, of course, still, hold on, there's still a pawn to be taken on h3, of course. Uh, this is still in position, right? But e4 would be another move to look to which looks interesting, definitely. To open this up, of course, you have to be careful before you do this, right? It's, it's got to be good. Um, but this looks pretty good to me, at least. But then again, maybe it's not good enough. Maybe here, white goes into this end game, and, well, maybe it's not that much, because the pawn c is also hanging, so it doesn't look like black is winning anything any material right here. So, but certainly something to consider. Because like I said, this break e4 you need to be careful with because, well, if it doesn't work out that much, then you just have alleviated pressure from the white position, have exchanged a pawn on d3. So b6 is a nice move too. Of course, it would be nice to take the pawn on h3, but okay. Still, pawn is hanging on h3, but I guess if you don't spot it the first time, then it's difficult to spot it the second time. Um, doubling on the d file, I like a lot. And now e4 would be again the way to go, I think. Now definitely e4 uh, with this pin on the d file. And this is just, it's going to be unholdable for, for, for white, I'm pretty sure. The e4 would have been very strong here. By playing bishop g6, you still give white the option to, to prevent e4. Um, 
by playing an ugly move like f3 or something else. Of course, the white position isn't pretty, but if you have the chance to go for something, go for it right away. I don't know why you play bishop g6 first. Maybe you didn't want to allow d takes e4, but even here, of course, rook takes d1 is possible, but if you're greedy, you can also take on e4 first. And um, this is just a full exchange. b3, but now e4. Rook ed2, bishop g5, yeah, of course. And this is over, I assume. I would be surprised if anything else is happening here. So we can just go through those moves, go through those moves rather quickly. Just have to make sure that you're not blundering anything. Exchanging pieces, okay, repeating, doesn't hurt. And now rook takes e3. Okay, okay. Not sure if this was necessary, but at least it won you the game immediately here after d2. Of course, more resistance would have been f takes e3. Now you probably want to play, well, I don't know what you want to play here. d2? d2, rook d1, and now queen g3, yeah? Rook takes d2 isn't possible because of queen e1. So I was thinking king f1 threatens rook takes d2. Yeah, this looks like it's more work than necessary. Yeah, so if white plays f takes e3, there's no direct win for me. Maybe best would be maybe best would be to go rook d3. Yeah, rook d3 I like. Yeah, uh, queen c2 and now queen e4. But even this, I mean, okay, this is also yeah pretty great, but it. Just doesn't seem like it was necessary here in this position to go for rook takes e3. Um, you're up in exchange plus a pawn. You don't need to give back any material right now. Um, I could imagine just playing slowly here. Something like queen f5, maybe going queen e5, something like this. You have all the time in the world. You don't need to sacrifice anything. I mean, here it worked out in your favor. You won pretty much immediately, but in general, only give back material, your extra material, if you're sure that it's winning or if it's improving your, your position clearly. And here, I'm not sure if that was the case, unless I'm missing something after f takes e3. I'm not seeing a direct win and looks like you make it, you make it harder on yourself here. All right, but all in all, very solid game. No, no mistakes really, I could see. So, um, good game. Thanks for sending it in. All right, now we're going to take a look or not. I was about to say, take a look at the game from Pawn Pusher, but Pawn Pusher I don't know what happened here, Pawn Pusher, but um, you need to send me another one because there's nothing here for me to analyze. So, can't do it. All right, let's go to the next one. I see some more from Gula Darsh, 1996. Um, of course, one analysis of one game is enough for now, I would say. So let's go to Minor Bison. And Minor Bison was playing with the black pieces. So let's flip the board around and take a look. We're having the King's Indian, Fianchetto variation, Knight a6, castle, c5, d5, knight c7. 
Honestly, I don't know much about this variation. So I'm assuming it's all theory here. A4, E6, E4, takes, takes. Okay. Bishop G4, H3. And now you're taking an F3 and you're asking me, I heard that, or I was told that exchanging the bishop in the Menoni structure is often good. Is that the case here? And I honestly don't know that much. Um, but yeah, in general, the point is that in Bononi structure, black is a little bit cramped. There are too many pieces fighting to, for too little space for black, right? So as black, in general, you like to exchange pieces, pieces, so you have more space for your pieces to maneuver. And they're not standing in each other's way. Um, so I think it's fine. Honestly, as for myself, I wouldn't like to just give up my bishop like that, but I think it's fine. I think it's a decent idea here. Takes, takes, rook e8, bishop g2, a6, a5. a5 really bugged me. I felt the opening went okay, but now I didn't know how to get my piece into the game. Well, one move here would just strike me immediately which is to move knight b5. This just seems to make so much sense and it looks like you're almost winning a pawn already. Um, well, at least you're asking some questions here. A knight b5 just looks very attractive for me. Um, if white takes on b5, then you have a double attack here against the pawns on e4 and a5. And unless I'm missing something, white cannot protect them both. So you're going to win one of them. That's good news. So white cannot take and at the same time white has to defend against the threat of you taking on c3 and then taking on e4. So probably has to play something like rook e1. Um, and now, well, I mean, several options. One option would be just to put a knight on d4. That looks pretty good to me. Or you could also play a move like uh, knight d7 to ask some questions here and maybe maneuver to e5. You really, you, you're never afraid that white is going to take on b5 honestly because then this pawn a5 is pretty much a lost child already. It's going to fall sooner or later. So definitely you should be happy about seeing a5 because it gives you this knight on c7 a route to go. Um, Yeah, I like the black position here, honestly. I mean, either one, rook, knight d4, knight d7, both look decent to me. Okay, rook b8, king h2, and b5. Yeah, and this, of course, is also possible, but it's not as pretty. It's, it's not as pretty as this knight b5 option, I think. Uh, rook e1, now you play knight b5. But now it's white that has a target on a6, right? And um, yeah, this just doesn't feel right to me here. Bishop d2. Knight d4. But still, I mean, black should be fine. Um, my feeling is that black should be absolutely fine here. Knight a4, rook b7, bishop c3, knight d7, and b4. So concrete play here by white. And now you're sacrificing the exchange with rook takes b4. Okay, I mean, I'm just going to suggest something. It looks strange, but what about the move queen f6? Um, obviously now threatening to take on b4 and also Introducing this idea queen takes f2. Of course, the critical try has to be b takes c5. Maybe this just doesn't work for black. Yeah, maybe this is just not great. Because if I have to take back, well, then white has very strong pawns in the center. So I was hoping to do something with queen takes f2, 
but probably white can just ignore everything here, play c6. And I was thinking maybe there would be something possible here, bishop e5, but honestly, I'm dreaming too much here. This is never going to work. Queen d3 is possible or just bishop takes d4. Um, so that doesn't work. Yeah, it looks like you're almost forced to sacrifice the exchange here. So maybe instead of knight d7, there was another option in this position. Um, such as maybe playing knight b3, rook a3 and c4. Not sure how much I like it, but this was definitely an alternative here. All right, but this is interesting. You sac you're sacrificing the exchange. Rook takes b4 and c takes b4 and you're saying you are hoping the connected pass pawns plus your bishop are going to be enough compensation. But you, could, you couldn't find a good follow-up plan. Yeah, honestly, I think you should have enough compensation here to play on the dark place, uh, on the dark square. So let's see what happens. Rook b1, a5. A5, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I would rather either play B3 or play Queen A5, because this Knight on A4 is a little bit lonely. <laughs> Probably white would need to retreat with something like Knight B2. Yeah, knight b2 seems to work fine here for, for white. But, okay, a5 is a standard move, obviously, but I'm not sure how much it is doing for you. b3 would be also definitely an alternative to consider. All right, a5, f4, queen b8. Yeah, okay, queen b8, queen d3. Yeah, you see now suddenly this knight on a4 is blocking your pawns and your queen is not coming into play. I think really that maybe queen a5 would have been a better option to activate your queen. Even if you, even if you just put your queen on b5. Uh, okay, here maybe it runs into bishop f1, that's true. But somehow my feeling is telling me that this is the way to go. Maybe rook c8 here. I like rook c8. And then if rook c1 and rook c3. I feel like this is where you need to look for improvement. And um, now, yeah, white is able to, to consolidate. And, um, but still, actually still, the more I'm looking at this, still this should be fine for you. Queen c4 is a good move, but still this, I mean, this is complicated, but I would guess that you're doing absolutely fine here. Takes, takes, why not? You're playing bishop c3, why not knight c3? Knight c3, if rook a1, then a4, so probably rook b3. This is crazy complicated. I don't have to tell you, right? But, um... D5 here, maybe. This is crazy complicated. Can white take? Now black would need to play knight B5. We have this position, which can only be better for black, if not winning. 
very complicated everything. I mean, this is one of the moments in time where I would like to have an engine, but my feeling is telling me you should be absolutely fine here, even if you don't play d5. Um, but this pawn is worrying me a little bit, so I'm, well, hold on, just rook c8. But then e5, d5, rook takes c3 is happening, yeah? And e6 is a threat. No, this is not better for black anymore. But then again, also black, white could play e5 in this position, of course, and also have this threat of rook takes c3. But here you have another past pawn. Very interesting. But my feeling is telling me, my feeling is telling me that black is doing well. Okay, let's see bishop c3. Rook d1. a4, bishop f1, and now you're just dropping this pawn d6, and you're saying dropping this pawn was silly. Um, hmm. Yeah, I much rather would have liked a knight on c3, honestly. Um, it, feels, it feels more solid. The knight on c3 would have been a monster. Here, even if you play a move like knight d4, uh, in the worst case, white could just take on d4 and take on b4 and you don't have any advantage. Uh, you're actually just worse. Um, because rook takes e4 is c7 and you lose. And otherwise white picks up the pawn a4 and it's just up a pawn, a pawn on c6. So I don't think here there's much you can do in this position. Crazy complicated though. Knight c7. Rook takes d6. But why not rook takes e4 now? Why not grab this pawn on e4? I guess rook d7 might be a problem. Yeah, this is not not simple uh, by any means, for sure. Absolutely crazy. I mean, I'm looking at moves like a3 here and a2, rook c1, and um, this is obviously very complicated stuff. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah, no clue what's going on here. Could be all three results, even though it feels like white is not worse. Okay, but rook takes e4, definitely an alternative. You play a3, oh, excuse me, a3, but now white is just blocking the pawns of bishop c4. Okay, rook takes e4, bishop b3, but now it looks like white has everything under control. Check, a2 takes takes but rook d7 you played rook a7 what about knight e6 and if now c7 then you could play rook a8 simply in rook c8 and pick this pawn up Unless there's rook d1. But here, maybe just king g7. And after rook d8, you can just take on c7. Wow, this is all, as you can tell probably, I'm also taking my time here because this is not easy to figure out. I mean, also rook e7, you have to check out here. I did rook d7, but maybe probably... Well, I can just black can just push now with 
uh, b3 and the counterplay is in time probably black is winning here um, what is what about rook b7 is this an idea again to play c7 then rook b8 this could be a problem yeah yeah this looks like a problem unfortunately this rook b7 idea very interesting So you tried rook a7, king g2, now knight b5 and rook b7. Check, knight d6. Okay, now you're losing the knight. Okay, rook a1, I think, was not the way to go. Obviously, you still have very good drawing chances if you go into this endgame here, but here after rook a1. Now, while it's not queening by playing rook d8 instead, so this is over. Um, so instead of playing rook a1, you would need to go rook a7, I assume. to force c8 queen and then play this position. And I think you would have very good drawing chances here. I don't think white can do much. You play rook a2 back. White has to keep an eye on this pawn. Um, this should give excellent drawing chance for black. But yeah, crazy that um, this seemingly very good position for you, I mean, Optically, look really good for black, obviously. Uh, turned, around, turned around that way, but it, I think it's also an important lesson here that, well, even if position looks really good and one feels like one should be winning, still have to figure it out, have to be careful, and yeah, a lot to calculate in this game, definitely. Um, My feelings telling me there was a win somewhere and I wouldn't be surprised if it was to be initiated with knight c3 here. But um, yeah, very difficult game, very complicated. And I think looking at this, I think the choice of you to go for the exchange sacrifice was absolutely fine like this was not the reason why he lost this game um, in the end here in this phase of the game after queen exchange this is where you need to look for your mistakes and um, definitely this has a lot to do with calculation so maybe this is something you want to look into when you do your training to improve on all right i think we're going to do one more it's got to be a quick one but Let's do one more. I, I set it up for one and a half hours, but this is the first show. So maybe if we go a little bit over time, that's fine too. All right. This one is from Plaky. And Plaky was playing with the black pieces. And uh, let's see what happened here. C5, D5, E6, C4, B5. And Plaky's asking, is the Bloomfeld a good companion to the Nimzo? I would say no. <laughs> Uh, for a long time, I was also looking for an option for um, to play against, obviously to play against this line 
pretty knight f3 pretty much. And I looked at the Blumenfeld and it's not good. It's just, it's just not good. Um, so you have to look at either d5 here or at b6. Really, those are the two options. In my series, I recommend bishop b4. This is also a third option. Um, but the two main moves are b6 and d5 at this point. b5. Well, if your opponent plays d takes e6, then, well, I would be happy to play Blumenfeld. But if I remember correctly, the problem is bishop g5 here. D takes e6, f takes e6, b3. And you're saying I should have exchanged on c4 and played d5. Yeah, that would be definitely an option. You could also play d5 immediately, but if your opponent doesn't want to take a pawn on uh, b5, then well, you can also take on c4 first, go d5. This looks already quite nice for black, I would say. Um, looks like good. Good opening here. Bishop e7, e3, castle takes b5. Well, now we have this typical Blumenfeld gambit. Sacrifice a pawn on d5, but I think black has great compensation in these kind of positions. Bishop d3. And now a6. Mm. Yeah, I guess that's fine. A6. Castle, A takes B5. You're asking if you should exchange here. Yeah, why not? Um, if you play A6, well, then you got to exchange on, on B5 at some point. All right, let's see. Takes, takes. Bishop b7, bishop b2. Now you're also asking questions for your opponents. The bishop b2, a good setup in general against the Blumenfeld. Well, here it definitely is. Makes a lot of sense to put the bishop on b2 and control the dark squares here. Now I'm getting the feeling that something didn't go perfectly right for you. Because really you want to be able to push e5, e4. And now it looks like... This is difficult and I'm not sure how much compensation you have for um, the pawn. So let's go back a few moves just to recap what happened. So maybe here, just start preparing e5. And you could start doing so by playing either queen c7 or knight bd7. Let's say knight b7, for white plays bishop b2, now you play queen c7. And um, I like this much better. If now castles, you play e5, you threaten e4 right away, white cannot push e4 himself, um, probably has to move the knight somewhere, and then knight g5 looks like a good idea to threaten knight e6. But well, just move the knight out of the way, knight b6. You can follow up with e4. Um, white can still not play e4 because of h6. This looks like much better compensation. And I wouldn't worry too much about the pawn on b5 for now. Looks like you're spending a lot of time to, to exchange the pawn, but doesn't do you much in the process. So yeah, I'm not sure about this a6 here. Okay, let's see what happened. Castle. And maybe even here, still, queen c7. Or even queen d6. Why not queen d6, actually? I, I like the queen better on d6, also protecting a pawn on e6. So, yeah, queen d6 I like. And then bishop b2, knight bd7. Looks strange at first, but you're going to play e5, so that's great. And... Um, Maybe there's something white can do now, like knight bd2, e5, and e4. Yeah, maybe it's not as great anymore, I have to admit that. But, yeah, here e4 is kind of a problem, that's true. But even here, maybe a takes b5, maybe something in this direction, I could imagine being fine for you. All right, let's see what happened in the game. Takes b5, bishop takes, 
bishop b7, you're asking if you should exchange this bishop on, a, on b5. Yeah, that would be possible too. Bishop a6 um, takes and rook takes a6. And then typical long-term compensation here, put on pressure on the a and b file. Yeah, why not? Um, not sure if it's better, but it's definitely also an option for black. Knight c6. Should the knight go to d7? I would say it looks a little bit more harmonious, right? In general, I mean, this is just my personal stance maybe, but in general, if the bishop is on b7, you don't want to block it by putting knight on c6. Just looks better here. The knight's protecting each other. Makes more sense, right? Queen can maybe go to b6. It looks, or to c7. It looks more natural. So yes, I would put the knight on d7. Knight bd2. Queen c2, queen c7. The computer says to put bishop to d6 and queen to e7, not easy to move, same piece twice though. I also find it hard to push center pawns, usually e5, but that's not possible here. Yeah, um, of course you want to push e5. Uh, that would be nice, but here of course you're not threatening it because white would just take on c6 and then take on e5. So yeah, maybe bishop d6 here. Preparing queen e7 followed by e5 and not easy for white to stop that plan. At the same time probably white will do something on his own like rook e1 and then if possible something like e4 but e4 is, is risky uh, because you can take everything and open up the bishop so this looks good. Yeah, I do agree with the computer here. Bishop d6 followed by queen e7 is definitely a plan you can remember for future Bloomfeld games if you're going to continue this gambit. Queen c7, knight g5, knight d8. You're saying it starts to go downhill quickly after this. Yeah, knight d8 is not a move you want to play, right? If there are other moves available. For example, here, a move like queen to d6 maybe. I don't see anything wrong with queen d6. Probably white is going to play f4 now, otherwise you could go for e5. Maybe e4, f4, e4 I would, I would guess is, would be white's choice here. And okay, the game continues. Maybe you can, now e5 wouldn't be a good idea now. White takes on c6. Okay, but the game continues. You're down a pawn, but it's not, it's not, over yet, of course. So instead you go knight d8, yeah, if you can avoid such moves to move the knight back to d8 where it just looks ugly, then definitely do it. g6, you're asking if h6 would be a better move? Yes, absolutely. Uh, hold on. Hold on one sec. h6, we have to watch out for bishop takes f6. First of all, let me check this out. In general, if that's possible to play h6, then yes. But the question is if bishop takes f6 is uh, of concern to us. Of course, we cannot take back the bishop because of queen h7 uh, checkmate, pretty much, unless we take with the rook, which would delay the checkmate one move. So we have to take on g5. And what do I think of this? Well, it's not pretty, but it would work. It would work. And probably I would prefer it over um, what happened in the game. Yeah, um, you're down a pawn, but at least this monster on on the long diagonal. Well, even if White returns now to b2, you can play something like e5, and you kind of have this monster restricted. However, in the game, g6 now weakens this long diagonal so much, and you cannot get rid of this knight on g5 anymore. Um, h6 fails due to queen takes g6. This looks very difficult now. So knight d3, queen b6. Yeah, just all the white pieces are now participating in the attack and um, as you're saying yourself, you're missing a, a pawn on the king side and 
Now all the white pieces are pointing towards your king pretty much. Sacrifices are in the air already. King g7 you play to prevent bishop takes g6 but knight e5 and um, yeah it looks like it's going to be too much. Unless you could have tried knight c6. No you cannot play knight c6 because of knight takes e6 unfortunately. So you cannot get rid of this knight on e5. Is there anything you can do? Probably not. This is just over. I mean, you can tell already by looking at it, right? d4, bishop takes g6. Just trying to figure out where the checkmate is here. I don't see it yet, honestly. Probably knight g4. Yeah, this looks like game over. I was just looking at queen c6 still. Threaten a little checkmate here, but f3 and now queen e8, but here white gives a check, takes an f6, and that's it. Um, but still, you could have still asked this question. I mean, may, okay, maybe there are several winning variations here for for white, but well, probably there are a lot of winning variations here, um, in fact. Yeah, it doesn't really change anything. So queen d6, f4, d3, bishop takes d3, and you resigned here. You're saying, I was disappointed with the result and how I played, but I think this could be a good opening. Could you do an opening series on Bloomfeld? There isn't much on it. Is Bloomfeld too risky or did I just play it poorly? I just find Bogo, qid, and qgd too boring. Should I continue to play it basically? Well, I already answered that pretty much. The Bloomfield is not considered a good opening. Um, I'm confident to say that. Uh, I don't see anybody play it um, because, like I said, I'm pretty sure that this choice here, Bishop G5, is just unpleasant for for um, Black to face. If everybody was to accept the, the pawn sacrifice and go for the gamut here with d takes e6 then i would be sure more players would play with the black piece but white doesn't have to go for this and um then just results in unpleasant positions for black i think i mean that's my last um la the last time i checked it so i don't think it's a good opening so it doesn't seem likely we're going to make a series about it I also don't know anybody on from a Chess24 team who plays it. So, um, yeah. You can, of course, continue to play it. I mean, that's up to you. Uh, like I said, I would also like to play those positions when white accepts the pawn sacrifice. Um, I think you play decently up to a point, but then it was m most important to to take control of the center and you didn't do it and then yeah, this knight g5 was causing some trouble and then you didn't really get a compensation for the pawn and then it went downhill pretty quickly. This knight d8 move was also not, not best, I think. All right. So I think we reached the end of this first show. Um, like I said at the beginning, guys, there are so many games I received there's no way for me to cover them all in one single show, so I'm going to continue next time uh, looking at games. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and <laughs> I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.